Are Dave Portnoy and his barstool bros the future of the Republican Party? This is not my party. Brought to you by The Bulwark. You probably know Dave Portnoy, or as he calls himself, El Presidente. He's the pizza-loving frat star who founded the extremely popular digital media empire, Barstool Sports. Now GOP bigwigs are inviting him to appear at Republican conferences, hoping he can bring some cultural cachet to the party. Please come! And Politico even wrote that the grand old party is becoming the Barstool Party. But will the stoolies go for that? No shot. No way. The Barstool Republican narrative dates back to 2016, when the parallels between the site and the rise of the populist Donald Trump were unavoidable. First, you got the irreverent language. Get that son of a off the field. Sam Ponder, you f And then you had the mocking of the elite media. Mainstream media, poop, poop. They are the fake, fake, disgusting news. We're not gonna let Mickey Mouse push us around. And of course, a shared hatred for political correctness. In 2016, Portnoy laid all this out, telling CBS, there's a sentiment among frat guys, lacrosse players, and middle-class affluent white kids that they're getting kind of persecuted. Oh, cry me a river. Trump's an F you to society who's telling us we're a bad guy because we like hooking up with girls on spring break. So it seemed like Trump and Portnoy were a match made in heaven. But will that love connection have staying power? If you were to ask me who I think like the biggest right wing social icon in America right now, I think it's Dave Portnoy. It's called Rise of the Barstool Conservatives. I'm not so sure. Now I get why some Republicans want this bond to be forever. Barstool is culturally relevant and Republicans have tended to, well, not be. Consider the bans we used to get at Republican conventions. Here's the problem. Barstool has always been intentionally non-political. They have a lot of personalities who draw a broad audience, not just right wingers. So getting co opted by the GOP's Model UN super nerds like Josh Hawley and Ted Cruz doesn't work for their brand at all. Not us. Consider the internal blowback when Portnoy secretly decided to go interview Trump. Here's Pardon My Take superstar Big Cat sounding off. This sucks. I do not want to talk about politics, but I'm thrust in this situation. And when El Prez interviewed Trump, you could sense a rift emerging. When Portnoy confessed, kneeling and things like that seems like such a small concession. While the tangerine tyrant doubled down. Yeah, I don't like the kneeling. I must be I know, yeah. with you. I don't like the kneeling. Then during COVID, Portnoy seemed to beat Trump at his own populist game when he started the Barstool Fund for small business owners who were struggling due to the COVID lockdowns. What can we do to make sure you stay in business till this pandemic is over? Wow, thanks. The more accurate reflection of the changing GOP is a different sports talk show host, Clay Travis. This woke virus keeps spreading in the world of sports. Travis, a former Al Gore, Barack Obama voting liberal, turned reactionary GOP troll when he saw the market for sports talk that took Barstool's irreverence. I like boobs and the First Amendment. And added on a dollop of race baiting. Adam Silver knows that having Black Lives Matter written on the basketball court is devastating to the overall NBA brand. And COVID denialism. You don't need to be worried about the coronavirus. You need to check yourself into an insane asylum. Here's Portnoy in his podcast distinguishing himself from Travis. He is more political because I think he does play that race card in right on the edge of race baiting, which I do not do. So it should be no surprise that this week it's Travis, not Portnoy, who's taking over Rush Limbaugh's old radio slot. He's teaming up with a more traditional conservative named Buck Sexton. I swear that's real, not a porn name. Horrible porn name. To each his own, right? So here's the political bottom line. I'm listening. While it's true that anti-PC country club bros have affixed themselves more firmly into the GOP, the notion that this non-political barstool set will stick with the Republicans en masse after Trump is gone might be more wishful thinking than reality. In fact, in 2020, the group that Trump lost the most ground with was college-educated white bros, the barstool demo. Not that you'll hear the Democrats bragging about that. Oh, wait, what? Political alliances that are based on style over policy are ephemeral and don't always have staying power. Kind of like a one-night stand. Barstool bros might know a little something about that. But Republicans are actively courting the stoolies. And in politics, that can be half the battle. If Democrats were smart. Not bloody likely. They'd try to do the same thing and compete for a demo that actually Biden does pretty well with. See you next week for more Not My Party. For more weekly episodes of Not My Party, hit that subscribe button.